Welcome to this advanced tutorial on GNU Radio and GNU Radio Companion and how to make it interact with Python, the underlying language uh, generated by GNU Radio Companion when uh, executing a flowchart. I am Jean-Michel Fried and will be hosting this uh, tutorial for the next hour, hour and a half. The outline of the presentation is as follows. This tutorial aims at emphasizing communication between GNU Radio Companion and external software by streaming data from uh, GNU Radio Companion through zero MQ uh, publish and uh, configuring the parameters of the GNU Radio flowchart by a server running in a separate thread. The conclusion uh, of this presentation will emphasize uh, application to synthetic aperture radar realization. So what is the problem statement we wish to address? Uh, some SDR processing might be best performed outside of GNU Radio. Indeed, GNU Radio scheduler will feed successive processing blocks from source to sync with a continuous stream of data and usually uh, losing data is frowned upon. On the other hand, some processing uh, might best be performed in burst. Uh, for example, we will address uh, radar systems, but also digital communication might lead to uh, processing burst of data when uh, communication starts and uh, might not require continuous streams. So in this example, we wish to make new radio and new radio companion interact with external processing tools, whether C, C++, or in our case, uh, GNU Octave, the free open source implementation of the MATLAB language. Furthermore, we might wish to interact with the uh, GNU Radio parameters uh, in uh, some discrete manner. Uh, for example, in the case of synthetic aperture radar, we might wish to move sometimes the antenna uh, while leaving the data stream continuous for example, because some phase alignment has been initialized and any stop, uh, stopping the uh, continuous data stream might uh, 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 lose this uh, phase calibration. So these two interactions from the radio frequency front end continuously streaming data to GNU Radio and then later uh, feeding some external software for uh, punctual processing Python, C++, GNU Octave, and this external tool providing comments and parameters uh, to GNU Radio will be uh, the outline of this uh, presentation. So let's consider a very simple flow graph where we have, let's say, for example, a noise source uh, feeding uh, a low pass filter. And uh, we wish, for example, to have uh, some external tool uh, interacting with the data stream. So we create a low pass filter with its uh, parameters. And uh, because there is no hardware uh, data rate limiting uh, uh, peripheral in this example, we need to throttle the data stream before feeding the spectrum analyzer. So in this example here, very simple flow chart that we will call demo one, for example, we store this into uh, a temporary directory and when we execute this flow graph surely enough we get the transfer function of the uh, filter that we just created now let us consider how we could interact with this uh, uh, data stream what we see here is that the uh, program that was generated by new radio companion will uh, create the various blocks. Uh, for example, we have here uh, the creation of the sampling rate variable. We have here the uh, spectrum analyzer creation with its uh, various parameters. And we have uh, in this example, the uh, throttle block uh, with uh, the, the throttle block and the low pass filter that have been created. Now, once these various blocks have been created, we connect them with between each other. And uh, once these connections have been completed, we will have uh, the top block start uh, until the user stops the execution and uh, uh, completes the execution of the flowchart. Uh, we might have some uh, uh, parameters that will be changed dynamically by the user. And these are callback functions. If, for example, we create a variable uh, f, 
and this f variable uh, is used to define the source block free, uh, the, 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 the low pass filter uh, cut off frequency uh, in this example here what we will see is that the uh, variable can be dynamically modified by the user and if we now look at this uh, f function that we just created we have uh, the variable f and we might get the current value of the variable and we might set the current value of the variable so the general outline of a GNU radio flowchart, a GNU radio companion flowchart output, the Python script that has been generated, will never give us access to the actual IQ data. The IQ uh, data stream is handled by these various processing blocks, and these various processing blocks are connected between each other, but there is no way for us from this Python script to interact with the data. Hence, our interest in uh, streaming the data to an external tool. Nevertheless, we might want this external tool to be able to interact with the parameters, in this example, this uh, variable f that we just created. So we might wish to have this external tool interact with get f or set f for getting and setting the variable uh, values. So that tells us how we wish to write uh, our uh, external processing uh, functions and finally because we see here that the main function from uh, GNU Radio Companion uh, starts uh, the uh, execution of the Qt uh, framework until it stops uh, we need to have some way of interacting with this uh, uh, scheduler from uh, external tools so if we come back here to the outline of the presentation, this is again, we have uh, this uh, class that has been created with its main function that will be executed, uh, various callback functions, the in block instantiation and connections. And we need to interact with these uh, 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 self-generated Python programs in order to introduce our own functions. So Marcus Müller's answer to this question was to use the Python module and Python snippet, which is the uh, topic of this presentation. So first of all, these callback functions are actually created whenever a block is defined in this example for uh, the new radio companion block description of the GRRPI uh, TX that we present at the European New Radio Day's uh, presentations. In this example here, the uh, radio frequency source accepts two parameters, the sample rate and the carrier frequency, and we wish to allow the user to dynamically change this carrier frequency by creating this parameter. So this parameter sample rate is only provided at uh, creation of a block, but this uh, carrier frequency here might be changed in a callback function, which is called setfrec. So the C++ implementation of this uh, block will uh, provide this uh, callback function that will change the hardware parameterization of the Raspberry Pi uh, transmitter by feeding this new carrier frequency variable that has been provided by, by the user. So in this example, we might wish to have an external uh, parameterization of this carrier frequency, for example, for a TCP IP server that will uh, send commands to the uh, Python processing block and allow for this callback function to be called. So we have an external Python uh, uh, client that will connect to the uh, Python uh, server that will be launched uh, upon execution of the GNU Radio Companion uh, flowchart. And this server will receive the command, uh, which will call the callback function, which will uh, then uh, reach the C++ implementation of the callback function to change the hardware parameterization of peripheral. And finally, because this uh, server will have to be launched somehow, we will need the Python snippet uh, to uh, execute uh, the thread and uh, providing the self argument to uh, allow tuning the parameters of the uh, Python program that has been generated by the radio companion. So let's try to do this step by step. Uh, here is an example of streaming the data from uh, GNU Radio to an external soft piece of software. And in this example, we will consider GNU Octave uh, with its 0MQ uh, uh, implementations. So we have here two sources 
that will be displayed on the queued graphical interface uh, frequency sync, which is the spectrum analyzer. And because we want to make sure that these two interleaved data streams uh, are uh, sampled at the same time, we uh, create this unique stream, which is the two data sets uh, interleaved here. And we wish to make sure that we know the amount of data that is transferred from GNU Radio Companion to the external piece of software. So we convert these stream to vectors of known size. And uh, thanks to this, we will use the 0MQ publish sync, which is actually a UDP-like uh, communication where data are continuously streamed. If there is no receiver, the data are just lost and the data stream will keep on uh, flowing, uh, which is the uh, uh, requirement that we uh, wanted to meet, uh, to, for example, uh, prevent losing the phase calibration at initialization. And if some external software collects the data, then it will be able to process this data. ZeroMQ is an advanced framework uh, on top of uh, IP and TCP or UDP that will create data packets uh, more advanced uh, than uh, what uh, TCP or UDP would allow and will uh, provide tags uh, so that some receiver might only uh, process a subset of the data that are being streamed. So if we look into uh, GNU Radio Companion, we will find uh, the various ZeroMQ publish, subscribe, which is the UDP-like, uh, and we will find some of the other methods provided by 0MQ in GNU Radio Companion. So in this example, we will use uh, the 0MQ uh, publish, subscribe, UDP-like framework, where we uh, provide vector length data, which has been created by this uh, stream to vector. We will uh, mention that we uh, communicate with the local host, uh, 127.0.0.1, on a selected port, 55.55, over a TCP link. And on the other hand, we will have uh, an Octave script. In this case, it will be uh, this uh, very simple script where we load uh, the 0MQ package. We define a sampling frequency, which has to be consistent with a sampling frequency that we define here in uh, New Radio Companion. In this case, it's only used to display the x-axis of the Fourier transform of this data. Uh, so we uh, create this uh, linearly spaced uh, x-axis for the uh, uh, display of the spectra. And we must make sure that the number of samples that is being uh, received here is consistent with the number of samples that is transferred by the 0MQ sync. So what we wish to demonstrate here is how we uh, open a 0MQ socket in the subscribe uh, complement to the publish sync. Uh, we mentioned that this socket is connecting to uh, the local host on the port 5555. If you were to run this flowchart on a remote uh, computer, then you would mention here that this address would be the remote IP um, uh, that is exposed to the uh, communication interface, and this would be as well the remote uh, uh, server address. We mentioned that this socket is a subscribe, and we will collect 0MQ receive, the NT data, and because these are bytes, we must remember that uh, we have here interleaved data, so each data stream is four bytes, um, so that we interleave these eight bytes uh, data stream. And because these are complex numbers, we must remember to multiply by two. So here we collect uh, NT times eight times two bytes. And uh, because this is small enough, uh, this will be received in a single uh, burst. We might wish to check if we have larger bursts that uh, the total number of data has been actually being collected and then we convert these bytes that have been received from the 0MQ uh, socket into single complex values to be processed by uh, uh, Octave. Once the vector length data has been collected, we split the um, uh, interleaved data stream into channel 1 and channel 2, and we finally plot the spectra. 
Now, one of the issues is that uh, we wish to process uh, this continuous data stream. GNU Radio Companion will be streaming continuously data, and here we wish to collect bursts of data. In this example, NT equals 2048 samples. And the challenge is that if we're not careful, we might collect old data that have been piped a long time ago. In the case of radar systems, we want to make sure to collect data when the antenna is at a fixed uh, position in a known uh, azimuth. And uh, to do this, the best way we found is to close the socket and open it just before we collect the data. Uh, we did not find how to reset the stream and make sure that the currently collected data are the latest that have been streamed by New Radio Companions. So the easiest is to close the socket and open it just before collecting the data. So if we run this example, we see here that by running the example, we get these uh, spectra of the two data streams that are being uh, uh, generated by GNU Radio Companion at uh, a local frequency and local frequency times uh, 1.6. And if we move a frequency surely enough, these uh, two spectra are moving in real time. Now, if we run simultaneously the uh, Octave uh, script here, so by running Octave and calling the uh, program name here, we simultaneously get these uh, spectra. And if we move the spectrum in uh, New Radio Companion, we see that indeed Octave is simultaneously streaming the data and, uh, and displaying uh, the, the correct spectrum, uh, demonstrating that we have received uh, the latest data. If we now stop the, uh, uh, the Octave script, we see that even though uh, the Octave script has stopped, GNU Radio Companion keeps on running as opposed to a TCP uh, communication that would stop the execution of uh, the server uh, until a new client connects. And if we move again uh, the spectrum and restart uh, the uh, Octave program, we see that indeed uh, the latest data are being displayed with the new uh, spectrum position. So this demonstrates communication from a uh, new radio companion to an external piece of software that might process bursts of data and not necessarily uh, continuously uh, acquire data uh, and, and maybe throw away a lot of this information. In the case of radar systems, you might stream several tens of megabytes per second. You only want to collect the data when the antenna is in a known position, and this will best be done by this uh, Octave script running the uh, 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 whenever uh, valid bursts of data are available. Now, uh, we, might, we might want to demonstrate this in a practical demonstration other than just displaying the spectrum. So let's try to see how we can run this example on a, a, a correlation where we have a signal source, uh, in the case of a radar system that will, might be a noise source or a, a whatever uh, broad spectrum uh, source, uh, which might be also be pulses. And we will uh, simulate a target by introducing a delay between a reference channel and the measurement uh, channel. So this might be, for example, targets at different um, uh, ranges from the, from the source. Again, because we want to make sure that the reference signal and the delayed targets are sampled at the same time, we interleave this data stream as we've just seen, throttle block because there is no hardware uh, data rate limiting uh, peripheral in this flowchart, uh, and uh, collect bursts of data. So in this example, the 0MQ script will not display the spectra because the spectrum of a white noise would be a flat spectrum but we will display the cross correlation between uh, vector 1 and vector 2. So if we run this example, uh, here we execute, uh, we see here the two, uh, uh, the, the two streams, uh, the reference signal and the time delay signal, and if I were to introduce some delay between the reference and the measurement, you would be hard pressed to detect these uh, time delays uh, from the raw data. So if we run this using uh, the Octave script, so the Octave script uh, is as follows. Um, we start by loading 0MQ and we will need the signal processing toolbox to run the cross-correlation. Again, 
we uh, define the sampling frequency and the number of data transferred from uh, the server to the client. Uh, and in this example, uh, we make sure to clear the uh, vector that will be fetched uh, to make sure that we get the latest data. We close the socket uh, 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 after collecting the data and we open it over here to make sure that we get the latest uh, information. Connect to localhost uh, port 5555 again and uh, in a 0MQ subscribe get the single value complex as we did before. Except that now, instead of uh, plotting the spectra, we plot the cross correlation between these two vectors. So here is the result of uh, this execution. What we see here is the spectra updated every uh, about uh, uh, 200 milliseconds. And if I am to move uh, the time delay, we see that indeed the cross correlation is updated uh, continuously. Now, uh, GNU Radio Companion will of course not allow you to introduce negative delays because it couldn't know what was the uh, output uh, in the past. So you only have positive delay and we start at 2048. The cross correlation is twice the data set and we move uh, to the right here. So what we see here is how we can efficiently use external software with a cross correlation of Octave in this, uh, in this case for running the cross correlation. We might wish to compare the data generated by uh, Octave with the data generated uh, by GNU Radio Companion. Now, here is an example of running the cross correlation in your radio companion. If we have a quick look at the slides, uh, the demonstration of this uh, uh, system was discussed at uh, the new radio conference in 2020. So here is uh, the example of a cross correlation uh, implemented in uh, new uh, in uh, new radio companion. If you remember your convolution theorem, the convolution theorem tells you that the Fourier transform of a convolution between two signals is the product of the Fourier transforms. And the difference between a convolution and a correlation is that the convolution is the integral of the first signal times the time-flipped copy of the second signal, as opposed to correlation, which is the integral of the first signal times the time delayed copy of the second signal. So between a convolution and a correlation, we have a complex conjugate to flip time. And this is exactly what we're doing here. We take the Fourier transform of the time delayed signal, which we convert from a stream to a vector because the Fourier transform can only operate on a fixed size vector. We take the original signal and take uh, again the Fourier transform of the signal uh, to multiply conjugate. So we take a complex conjugate of one signal with respect to the other and take the inverse Fourier transform before going back from a vector to a stream and feed uh, acute uh, time sink. So if we run this example here, uh, we have uh, the estimate of a cross correlation as performed by GNU radio companion. And if I move here the slider, we see again in the time domain, it will be very challenging to detect this uh, time offset between uh, the reference and the measurement signal, but the correlation nicely shows how this correlation shifts. And if we compare this with uh, the uh, output of a cross correlation of uh, new octave, we have this consistent uh, behavior of a cross correlation peak, obviously. So in this example, uh, we can reach the result using uh, GNU Radio Companion, except that GNU Radio Companion will uh, process a continuous data stream, whereas if we are steering an antenna, we might wish to only process bursts of data uh, in a known condition, and uh, GNU Octave would be best suited to this operation. Indeed, if we stop GNU Octave from running, GNU Radio Companion will keep on processing the data as expected. So this concludes the demonstration of streaming data from GNU uh, Radio to an external tool, in this example, Octave, and checking the consistency and real-time processing. Now, the second part of this uh, tutorial 
uh, mentions that we wish to be able to change the parameters, the parameterization of uh, GNU Radio from external piece of software. So let us quickly introduce two concepts uh, from computer science, the threads and uh, the server client uh, model. A thread is a piece of software that will be executed in parallel to the main software sharing uh, uh, memory as opposed to forks which will create a new environment the thread will share uh, uh, variables with its uh, uh, spawning uh, software so in this example we have created uh, a python thread where we see here the definition of a thread which might uh, receive an argument and the threading uh, library from python will allow you to create multiple threads and possibly provide uh, different arguments to each one of these threads. So let us quickly see how uh, threads uh, work in Python. Very little point in watching us type the uh, program, so let us look at uh, how it, it looks like. So uh, we created uh, a variable that is uh, shared by all the instances of a thread. So here we have three copies of the same piece of software that will be executed. This global variable will be accessed and the classical issue with uh, having a global variable shared by multiple threads that might handle this unique variable will be to the consistency which is taken care of by mutex by mutually exclusive access to this variable and we will display the argument uh, every uh, second. So if we look at this example we can execute the uh, thread here and we see that indeed all three threads are executed uh, simultaneously. They will each have their unique uh, ID and they share this variable. We actually also see that the execution sequence might change over time. Here we have uh, 1, 3, 2 that has been executed while uh, here it is 1, 2, 3. So now that we're familiar with the thread concept and the ability to run a second piece of software in parallel to the main uh, scheduler uh, function, uh, let us see how we can communicate between uh, the uh, uh, external software, uh, the client and the server. By definition, a server is the piece of software that expects uh, a connection from the outside world that is waiting for the connection. The client will be the one connecting and creating the link. Um, so the various uh, client server models uh, are uh, either connected or streaming the datagram. So if we look at the uh, socket man page, uh, we have here the definition of the various uh, uh, IP uh, communications. So we see here that we can have either a stream that is a reliable two-way connection, uh, which is the TCP communication model, and we have the datagram, which is the UDP model, as was just seen with uh, Publish Subscribe, where data are just thrown on the network, and if no one collects this data, then they are just lost. So in this example, although the data streamed from uh, New Radio Companion would be just uh, collected by Octave, uh, sometimes when bursts of data would need to be processed. In the case of commands, we want to make sure that each and every command is properly transferred from the uh, client to the server. So in this case, we will create a TCP server. Uh, all these concepts are well described in uh, Stevens TCP IP Illustrated. So what does this uh, TCP server look like? If we have a quick look at the uh, piece of software, we need to import uh, the socket capability of Python. Uh, we uh, create a socket which is a stream, so a TCP server to make sure that each and every command is indeed transferred as opposed to the previous case where we could waste some of the data streamed from New Radio Companion to the external piece of software. Here we want to make sure that each and every command is transferred from the client to the server. Uh, having done this, we uh, create the socket on, on a given port here in the local host. And once a client has connected, we accept the connection, we get each command from the client to the server, and we act accordingly, possibly quitting once the uh, queue for quit uh, command has been received. So we can execute this using uh, Python 3 uh, interpreter. And when uh, the server is connected, we can launch a client and connect to the local host on port 4242 to uh, send command 
and uh, of course q is the uh, function for leaving or we can send uh, over command that will be uh, processed until we reach q so we see here why we had an infinite loop in this example the infinite loop allows us to launch a new server whenever the uh, client has uh, quit the connection so uh, this will allow us to have multiple uh, instances of uh, sending various commands to the uh, GNU radio companion from from a client so here is an example of uh, how we can put together all this information and let's try to uh, run this example together where we wish to have uh, a thread executed in GNU Radio Companion that will change parameters uh, uh, of this flowchart. So let's create a new uh, empty flowchart where we consider a signal source and this signal source will have a frequency defined by a variable f and this variable f will be tunable from an external piece of software. So let's make this variable f define the frequency of the source, which is throttled again and will be displayed on uh, as is on, on a spectrum analyzer, so the frequency sync. So how can we make this uh, flowchart interact with the internal external board? So let's make this uh, a demo and we save this in, uh, in a directory uh, for uh, uh, modification. So if we just run this, of course, we just get the uh, spectrum output, uh, very little uh, interest. So how can we make this interact now? So first of all, we wish to create this external thread that will interact. So to create a piece of software, we need this Python snippet and this Python snippet will allow us to in include some sort of uh, 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 Python uh, commands either after initialization, after starting, or after stopping. So let's just try it a very basic example where we print a message when executing uh, this, this uh, Python snippet. And if we have a look at the uh, console output when running this, indeed we see now that we have this hello message, meaning that this piece of software has been executed. So rather than just displaying a message, we might want this uh, snippet to actually launch a, a, a thread. So this thread will be implemented in a small piece of software, uh, which is a Python script. So we search for the Python module and the Python module will be called EPY module zero here, which is a, a name that is given by New Radio Companion. And we will uh, create uh, the thread uh, function by creating, for example, this uh, name. Uh, and this uh, thread function here might, for example, just display a message at the moment, which is uh, uh, just something that mentioned that this is a thread that is being launched. Now, once we've got our thread function, we need to call it. And to call the thread function, we need to import the threading capability of uh, Python and to uh, launch. So we threading.thread launch. And we mentioned that the target is this uh, module that we just created, so the EPY module zero, and uh, we call the uh, main thread function that we just created, and this has to be started. So this is uh, the demonstration of how we launch this uh, external thread. So here we see that we indeed have hello, hello thread, so meaning that the thread has been launched and GNU Radio Companion is executing. So now we have indeed this uh, capability of creating an external uh, piece of software and uh, running, for example, a server in this external piece of software. So let's demonstrate that uh, indeed the, the thread is running. So if, for example, we wish to have some uh, timing capability, we can import uh, the time function and we can try to uh, run this infinite loop where we uh, increment a variable uh, which has been created uh, just above here and uh, we display the value of this variable to demonstrate how uh, the thread is running. So here we print n and remember to uh, introduce some sort of latency to make sure that you don't overflow the capability of new radio companions. So we have a delay of one second between two 
uh, increments and display. And so if we uh, run this script, we indeed see that once every second the uh, counter is incremented and uh, displays uh, its value. Now, at the moment, we have an external thread that is launched, that is executing every second. But if we try to stop the script, the thread keeps on running on the background. So this means that we now need a way of killing uh, this, this thread. And as it is now, the only way is to actually identify the, um, the, the executing task and to kill the thread uh, over here. So now we need to find a way of uh, telling the thread to die when GNU Radio Companion is, is stopping. So we need to pass arguments uh, to, the, to the thread. How do we do this? We create an argument to this uh, function here that will be, for example, uh, uh, a variable that says we need to stop. And we test if uh, this variable has become equals to 1 then we break the infinite loop. So this will be our solution for stopping the thread when a command is sent from the uh, main program to the, uh, to the executing thread. Now, now we need to find how to uh, provide this function uh, to, to stop. And this variable will be uh, passed as an argument over here. So this time we have an argument that is provided after launching. So we add that the arguments is equal to this uh, stop uh, uh, this stop variable that we wish to create, which is of course created here as we should not stop at the moment. So we create this as being equal to zero. Now we wish to uh, set the variable when we quit. So we create a new snippet and this time the Python snippet will uh, uh, execute when we stop. So this is after stopping and we will say that the stop variable is set to one. If we just do this, first of all, uh, when we generate the uh, script, we will see that the script that has been just generated indeed includes our function. However, the snippet that is executed uh, after the initialization and when the program stops are actually two different functions. These two functions are over here and we will create two local variables which are gmf stop and gmf start here and stop over here. So if we wish to have these variables being shared, we will declare them as global variable so that they know that the uh, uh, two functions will run the same uh, quantity. And we need to uh, continuously monitor the status of this variable so that we will create uh, this uh, variable here as a lambda function. So this lambda function will be uh, the uh, current value of this uh, variable and we will continuously update the value of this uh, variable so that this time over here this uh, variable is no longer has to be evaluated and here we create uh, the uh, evaluation function. So thanks to this capability now we have this uh, uh, global variable that says we wish to stop this variable will be updated continuously uh, by and actually we need to have a list here of arguments and uh, the uh, Python snippet will uh, change the value of the variable so that the thread stops when uh, we quit the um, GNU Radio execute. So this time if we execute this, we indeed see that the uh, thread starts, it is counting, and when we stop, it actually stops the execution. Actually, we, we can uh, check that it is stopping by uh, displaying here a message stopping thread and this way we make sure that the thread is 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 stopped when we quit the radio companion so here we have the thread that is starting counting every second and finally when we stop we indeed see that the thread is stopping so finally now we wish to have this thread 
tuning the parameters of uh, new radio companions. So we have this variable f that we created. And what we've seen earlier is that this uh, f function would create this uh, setter and getter, so this set function and get function, which would indeed change the uh, frequency of the source block. So what we need is to change. So we see here that we have this f function here, and we have set f, uh, the consequence of changing f. So here we can uh, say that whenever uh, we increment the value, well, we can say that, for example, uh, the uh, the block uh, dot f is equal let's say a thousand times n and we can uh, run the uh, uh, set function of uh, this uh, quantity here now what we need is to be able to uh, pass the uh, implementation of the set f so we will provide a new argument here and this new argument uh, that we provide to the thread will be the self uh, function of uh, here in the Python snippet launch. We will provide the self of the coding program so that the uh, functions, the callback functions of uh, the original launching program will be accessible to the thread. So here self will refer when we create the uh, executable here, we have indeed uh, the creation of the thread, which provides self and self will refer here to these uh, callback functions that we have here, set f and get f. And the f variable here will be the same as the argument that we provide. So by executing this example, uh, we see that indeed every second, the frequency of the calling function is changing according to the execution of a thread and if we stop the execution the thread is stopping whenever we launch again we see that indeed the uh, frequency is being set by the external so piece of software so to summarize everything that we've done here we have the external piece of software that is created as the python module here which we created by providing the uh, stopping capability of this external thread and providing uh, the uh, pointer to the uh, local functions of the launching program. We've been able to change the value of a variable of the calling function as well as uh, the value of the blocks and we stop the thread. This uh, piece of software is executed upon initialization where uh, we execute the snippet after initialization with various messages and this global variable that will uh, also be used for stopping the execution of a thread. And in conclusion, we have the uh, expected result of an interaction between an external Python software and uh, the GNU Radio Companion flowchart. So now that we've demonstrated uh, threading capability, all we need to do is to add in the uh, uh, thread the server, uh, which we will do uh, quickly and not record. Uh, no point in watching us type uh, some software. So we've taken the exact piece of software, but this time we replaced uh, the counter uh, running with a timer uh, and a sleep function with the socket. So this time we open the socket, we connect the socket on the port 4242 and we listen for a connection. Whenever uh, we get a client connecting, we receive as we've seen earlier. And in addition to the uh, quit function, this time we will get the uh, uh, frequency increment command. We will increment this time the variable, not uh, as was done earlier under a, a time consideration, but uh, when the command is received, we change the frequency and we set the frequency. So if we now execute this uh, flow graph, we see that uh, the thread has started and we can run a client which connects to the local host 127.0.0.1 on port 42.42. We see that we are connected. And whenever we increment the frequency, we see that this external software will connect uh, and, and change the parameters. When we quit, we have disconnected from the server. And if we stop, since the uh, thread has stopped uh, handling the uh, connection from the client, the flowchart will stop. 
So this demonstrates uh, that we can uh, have this external uh, software. In this case, it was uh, a Telnet client interact with New Radio Companion and uh, and change the parameters of uh, uh, in this case the source. So this wraps it all up. We see that by combining Python module and uh, Python snippet, we can launch some function. In this example, a thread. This thread has received the uh, self uh, argument so that we could tune the launching function uh, variable and callback functions and by uh, running the uh, telnet uh, client we could interact with uh, the parameters of uh, the uh, frequency source and we've seen on the other hand that uh, zero mq allows us to stream the data to an external software in our case octave and to process the data so to conclude this presentation, what was the practical use that prompted this whole investigation? We wanted to assemble this uh, radar system using software-defined radio. In this example, we had uh, a synthetic aperture radar. In this case, this antenna is a reception antenna. The emitting antenna is static uh, over here. And the source is either a frequency step continuous wave in which uh, we uh, uh, tune as was done uh, right now the source frequency or it can be a noise source uh, in this example Wi-Fi is quite close to noise so here we have a Wi-Fi dongle which continuously streams data because this noise needs to be collected on a reference channel we see here that this noise source feeds one channel of a B210 dual channel receiver the second receiver is connected to the antenna and cross correlating the reference measurement with a received measurement allows us to measure the range to target. Now, initially, as we were doing this measurement, we got several echoes with the uh, antenna located at a given location, and we wanted to know the azimuth from which these echoes were coming to check whether echoes were coming from these cars parked over here, from the roof of these uh, uh, parking lots or from uh, the house on the opposite side and to get azimuth we needed to move the antenna. Moving the antenna meant uh, uh, attaching it to a rail and this rail is motorized. This uh, motor is driven uh, by a microcontroller sending commands. Uh, indeed uh, the uh, uh, scheduler of Linux would not allow us to precisely uh, move uh, this uh, stepper motor because the uh, time interval between clocks is not deterministic. So in this case, we have a dedicated microcontroller uh, generating the clock signals to move this uh, stepper motor and the stepper motor control is driven by uh, uh, this external piece of software which collects data from the antenna, cross correlates the reference and the measurement and once uh, processing is completed, we'll start moving the motor. Now the motor takes a few seconds to move the antenna from one location to the other so that the data do not need to be streamed continuously as the antenna is moving and uh, the measurement is not stationary and only when the motor has completed its uh, task will a new data set be collected. Uh, in this example, the motor is controlled by the UART, uh, the serial port of the microcontroller, using the instrument package of uh, GNU Octave. So to conclude this demonstration, here is an example of a synthetic aperture radar image of targets. And interestingly enough, what we see is that the strongest targets are uh, actually generated over here by the house on the opposite side of, um, of my apartment. And here, actually, the strongest targets are due to these roofs. If you can look closely, these various uh, parking boxes uh, have some roof with some uh, metallic uh, coating to make it watertight. And these are at right angles and these will act as corner reflectors. So uh, quite surprisingly, the strongest reflections are not these uh, cars parked on the uh, left side uh, of, of, of this image, but it's actually the corner reflector like shapes of this right angle uh, interfaces between the roofs of these parking boxes. So here is this uh, synthetic aperture radar image that was collected by illuminating using a Wi-Fi covered emitter, uh, just streaming random data uh, to illuminate the scenes. So we've demonstrated how uh, to make interaction between GNU Radio and the flowchart generated by GNU Radio Companion. Uh, with external tools, uh, feeding these external tools with bursts of data, whereas 
the uh, data stream from new radio are contiguous uh, which is needed for example when phase alignment has been uh, uh, calibrated see for example the presentation by uh, clement campo and others about uh, phase alignment on the x310 and uh, this framework although they've been demonstrated in this tutorial on a single same computer this is best achieved for making embedded uh, hardware uh, communicate for example with a host pc in our case the uh, uh, radar uh, streams were collected using a raspberry pi and the usb3 interface of a raspberry pi 4 with a laptop uh, connected to the raspberry pi for an internet link so see the tutorial by Gwenael about uh, running new radio on embedded hardware and uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we believe that this uh, strategy is a, a fruitful alternative to creating uh, custom out of three blocks rather than uh, having to comply with the framework of new radio and the work block uh, running continuously. This will allow us to implement in uh, external languages in this example octave but might also have been python some processing tools uh, finally this uh, conversion of uh, continuous streams to burst processing might have also been handled using uh, the tag uh, capability of new radio as is often done uh, in a digital communication context and this will be addressed in the tutorial by Thomas Lavaren and, and Cyril Morin uh, about uh, using uh, tags in new radio and with this conclusion, I thank you for your attention.